让你用一个词来形容一下自己，你会选择什么？获得美国总统学者奖的中学生都是一些出类拔萃的人之骄子，那么他们的关键词是什么？这个词背后又有着怎样的故事 ？First, what is your word? Spunky. A B C. It's adventurous. Mysterious. Curious. Self-reflecting. A creative. It's open. 敬请收看本期 Small Talk， 特别的词，特别的我。I wanted to change it to quick because I think clever is a little too,、uh, it, it's too much. I think, or, or at least I have the energy of a normal person, but I'm so small that I can just get so much more movement in. <laughs> okay. That spring, I was was supposed to be my first chance to dance in point shoes, in a performance. What's and, a point shoe?、Um, the toe shoes, the hard ones. Oh, the ones that like stand up. Yeah, yeah. I used to do that, by the way, when I was young. Thank you. <laughs> but I was when I was in high school, I was 320 pounds. So, All right, my next one, Dean. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Good. And where where are you from again? Mesa, Arizona. Mesa, Arizona. It's hot there. It is very hot there. Is it hot like Nanjing hot or? It's a、uh, non-humid, dry heat, but it's extremely hot. Extremely hot.、Yeah. Okay. What is your word? Um, I actually chose a kind of hyphenated slash acronym kind of word. Okay. A B C. A B C. Um, it's usually used for people who are Americans born Chinese. Okay. And I chose this to kind of show the duality of my life in America, having a Chinese tradition, but also being allowed the type of freedoms you enjoy being an American. Okay, so ABC it describes kind of your life and your upbringing. What do you mean by that? Well, with this type of like Chinese tradition, like my parents, they care about family a lot. They care about education a lot. So I have that type of pressure on me to try to maintain myself in school and. Um, not just the pressure they give me to do well, but like kind of self-imposed cultural pressure kind of thing. Because、mm -hmm. a lot of my friends are also ABCs, and、mm -hmm. they also have that type of mentality. So you have that going on. But at the same time, I love having fun. I, I love like hanging out with friends, which is something that I've discovered people here don't do as often as we do. So it, it's kind of like a way of balancing these two. Tell me more about that. You've discovered here that people don't do that as much. What do you mean by that? Well, like.、Um, I like playing、example. jokes. I like <laughs>、okay. playing jokes a lot. Okay. And then、uh, we made bets. And these are the people、um, on the trip with you. Yeah.、Uh, okay. My friend Ben over here and Jake, <laughs> and Wuxi, they, okay, we first went to Suzhou and I spoke Chinese a lot. They got mad at me because I spoke Chinese, like these, because I could make jokes about my fellow Americans. Yes. <laughs> and so, <laughs> <laughs> and they, you so guys in, don't know what he's talking about. Right. right? Yeah. So, so in Wuxi,、um, they, they bet me that. I couldn't last three days without speaking Chinese, so I could listen to everything they say, but pretend I don't speak a word. So I'm kind of a spy, like a double seven kind of thing going on. And so, <laughs> just like that. This is the first day we're at the dinner table. We're eating, and then like, like um, the um, I don't know what the, the, I think the director of the Wuxi like education system came over. I was making a toast to our table,、uh -huh. and he was staring directly at me, and he was like, "You know, 你老家在哪里 Like, where's your like old home?、Yeah. I was like, "Crap!" Like, <laughs> do I? You know, I don't want to lie to him and pretend I don't understand, but I had ten yuan on the line. <laughs> so yeah, that's a lot of money. Yeah, that's so pride thing too. Yeah, you don't want to deal I was like, um, you know? you know, it's a bet right now, and. Yeah, he kind of understood, but I ended up losing it anyway. <laughs> yeah, and then I tried to pull the same thing here. Lasted about an hour, <laughs> but my host didn't find it very funny. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it's an interesting thing to me because I speak Chinese too, right? And I can be, I can be on trains and stuff, and I hear people talking about me, and I just love to sit and listen.、So、be careful out there if you see me sitting next to you. I know what you're saying. <laughs> but so, have you found it?、Uh, is this your first time back to China? It is. It is. What do you think? What's your general impression of it? I, I like it a lot. I, I think that people here are、um, a lot more courteous than in the U.S. and they they tend to be really sacrificial towards their guests, and、mm -hmm. I really like that.、Um, the people here, I find them a lot more、um, innocent, a lot more pure than the people I know back home, which I think is. And what does that a, say about、trait. your nice female <laughs> colleagues that are sitting there going like this? I back、think. back home. <laughs> See, they're in China now, so they don't count. Like these are the people outside our group. Yeah, so it's really refreshing for me. And do you find anything like we were just talking about the differences between your friends back in the states, the people you've met here? You think people are more open-minded back home, or 
maybe open-minded, but I think it's more just they're used to seeing really weird things. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like Jason. <laughs> like here, you're, um, I think people tend to be a little more conservative mm -hmm. and uh, a little more worried about how they appear. Yeah. So then you're really not used to seeing someone with long hair or, um, yeah. I don't know, well, you, random pickup lines. What's your name? <laughs> yeah. I'm Henry. Henry. Now, you must know, Henry, I'm going to look on my little sheet and see what your word was. Henry, chivalry. Yes. Ah. So, Henry, first off, show us your hair one more time. Right. Maybe just sling it, <laughs> sling it over your shoulder. You know, sling it over your shoulder. So, whenever you think, I think of chivalry. <laughs> Explain to me what chivalry means. Chivalry. Well, chivalry was an old code in medieval Europe, where basically it was for the knights, all the nobles who went around on crusades and quests and the like. And it basically meant that they had to be nice to everyone and honorable in combat and go out of their way to help anyone who is less powerful or poorer than they were. I thought those were supposed to kill people that were less powerful than them. <laughs> that's what a knight does, right? Well, that's the other part. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that's the killing part as much as I like the peaceful part. Okay. So, but it's just a really nice old coat. And this hair is actually part of a tribute to that era because in some cases hair was worn long in that era. So I just think it's a nicer time of humanity, much like China is now. I think America has lost a lot of that kindness and courtesy that were prevalent among the nobles then. Have you done anything specifically that can prove your chivalrousness? <laughs> Chivalrousality. Chivalrousness, Chival 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 I think. Chival okay, what that? Anything specific? Yes. Well, I formed a knightly order last summer. Mm -hmm. That was kind of an adventure. Really? But, yeah. So a place called Governor's School. It's a summer program that was six weeks long that you slept at. So I don't know if you've, you probably haven't seen Monty Python and the Holy Grail here, but there's a fruit called a I coconut. Have. And if you cut a coconut in half and hollow out the insides, you can clack the coconut halves against each other to make it sound very much like a horse. And so I formed a knightly order of knights with coconut horses last summer at Governor's School, and we all swore to the code of chivalry and clopped around the campus about every other day. <laughs> Sounds like a great way to get into a fraternity. <laughs> okay. Give me time. All right, that's good. All right, where's Joanne? She's the receiver. Okay, the receiver. Joanne, your word was empathetic. Uh huh. And to tell you the truth, I forgot what that means. That's why I want to ask you. It's not pathetic. That's completely different. Sometimes. Okay. So as a SAT passer, you're gonna to have to explain that to me. It's it normally has to do with like relating really well with people, and if you empathize with somebody, like you really understand them, and it's I don't know something like that. So like, it's, um, it's a way to really understand somebody. Yeah, like. Okay, I'm empathizing with you right now. Can I say it like that? Sure. Okay. If you want to. <laughs> I understand you. Okay, like <laughs> I think um, relationships and friendships are the most important thing in my life, and. When I get to know people, I don't just know them on the surface, but I really try to like understand where they're coming from and who they are because it's not like just how a person is at the time, it's like their background and their friendships and their relationships and what they're involved in that really makes the person. And so like I just really try to know people. I don't Have you gotten to know the people on your trip? Did you guys know each other before you came to China? We for met a day. each other for yeah. one day. Well five days. Well, five yeah, days. We met for a few days before about a month before the trip. So. Okay. Have you said you've started to form some good friendships on this trip? Oh, yeah. 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 So. For example, I want to <laughs> empathize with all of you. Okay. Who can explain to me just a, the, kind of the connection that you all have gotten on this trip? I make fun of Ben all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I don't know. Well, first of all, his name means stupid in Chinese. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> so you did learn a little Chinese when you were here. <laughs> But yeah, and he makes fun back, so. Well, Ben? You well, she's short, so it's easy to make fun of her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think all of us, um, we're very similar in that we're well-rounded. So um, even though we don't do everything really well, we all have passionate inter interests. Um, so that we all kind of complete one another. Um, whoever picked our, our group did a great job because we all mesh really, really well. So we can make fun of each other. Um, well, everybody makes fun of everybody, uh, and we can all laugh about it at the end of the yeah. day. 
So Ben, what is your word? Uh, my word was adventurous. Okay. Because um, I'm really willing to try anything once. Uh, that's a lesson my parents taught me very early in life. So when you came to China, one of the things you get to try once is a lot of different kinds of food. <laughs> yes, I've. Have you? Is, let me. I'm not going to ask you. I want to ask you guys. Has he been adventurous in trying food? Do you know? For the most part, I think. Yeah. For the most part. I think he's been sneaking McDonald's in at night. <laughs> sneaking McDonald's in. <laughs> what are some of the things you've tried? Um, I had some snake, some eel, uh, pig's ear. Um, Got to try the nose. That's the best part. Well, they didn't give me any nose, so oh, if you've okay. got some, okay. I'll, I'll get that. Um, got a turtle foot in some soup. Um, it's, it's in a new experience, turning over a foot of an animal, like an entire foot in your meal. You just yeah, don't you, get that in America. No. So did you have anything specific about being adventurous in your younger days? Um, something I do a lot is hiking, camping, and backpacking. Um, and one night, with my, my father uh, likes to get us on little adventures. Um, so we were hiking in New York, uh, trying to get to a, a specific camping spot. And he misplanned the trip a little bit. So we were wow. about three hours longer than we intended. So we were hiking um, in, in the dark at night. And so he was going to wait for my mom and just send me and my twin brother ahead without flashlights in a place we'd never been. So, Nice dad. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. <laughs> well, I'm tired. You guys go ahead. You know, any big animals, scream. So um, just night hiking is something I learned to do really early um, without a flashlight. And I was really scared the first time I did it because it's like a 10-year-old kid. You kind of think every shadow is like something that's going to kill you or something. So... Um, because I tried it and I didn't die, uh, I figured I can try anything once and it'd be okay. What, okay, Nicola. 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 Nicola, where are you from? It sounds very Spanish or South American. I'm or? from New Mexico. New yeah. Mexico, okay, and originally? New Mexico. New Mexico. <laughs> Nicola. Same house my whole life, yeah. Okay, good. And New Mexico is also very hot, like Arizona. No, but I live in the mountains, so it's not. Oh, okay, it's not so hot. That's good. What's your word? My word? Yeah. Mysterious. Ooh. And it actually, kind of doesn't work because I was using it. Well, no, it does. You have very mysterious eyes. Okay. I'm currently you. lost yeah. in your eyes. Whoa. Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay. I thought this was a talk show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually am using it more that I am intrigued by mystery. So like just um, pondering life's mysteries and just, you know. Such as? Such as why we exist and <laughs> I'm really fascinated by world mythologies you know all the different ways that different cultures have figured out why we're here what why the natural world is around us mm -hmm. and so I chose mysterious I guess so mysterious kind of it's actually that. more like intrigued by mystery rather than yeah, mysterious exactly. itself I mean okay. you could also say that I'm mysterious I guess in that I mean I love to perform and so when I'm on stage, I, I'm not Nicola. I am some other being on the stage. And so that's also, I guess, a little mystery. It's very mysterious to me. I empathize with you. <laughs> well, thank you. Is that good? Yeah, yeah. Oh, do you see how fast I learn things? I, should get, I, I, I think I should get an honorary presidential scholarship. We'll work on that. We'll talk to the president. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Hannah. Hi, Hannah. <laughs> Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Okay, what's your word? Um, the word I used was curious, but I was kind of debating between that and clumsy, because I think it's like... <laughs> well, usually they kind of go together. Like, if you're curious, right. often you end up being clumsy. Right. Because I'm curious, I like, always end up being clumsy. It's kind of like the product, so... <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about some of your clumsy or clumsiness or curiosity. curiosity. You can stop yes. at curiosity. Okay. okay. Um, well, something that happened to me when I was 10 was I was actually back in China and I was visiting a zoo and I thought it was really interesting how animals eat. And I thought it would be really funny if I could feed the animals. And um, all the, <laughs> well, the, the animals are all behind bars, but like I was really small, you know, so I was like, well, I can like stick my arm through the bar. 
So we're at like the monkey cage. I was like, oh, you know, I really like the monkeys. And so I had some like dried corn and I like stuck my arm all the way in. And was there, like, there is a reason there's bars. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, well, I, you know, know I was this curious. Yes. So I was like, no, here, monkey, monkey, monkey. And, um, you know, this monkey came over and I was like, oh, all right, you know, he's going to eat my corn. Well, he ate my corn and he like chomped on my hand too, <laughs> which was unfortunate. You know, I was 10 and so I like started bawling and all that stuff. And they thought I might have rabies, you know, et cetera. But anyway. Did you have rabies? Did you have no, all I the didn't. shots in the arm? Well, see, they were about the shots too, and so I just like took a chance and it was okay. Okay. But um, that's my story about being curious and how it leads me into like bad situations. So that was when you were 10. What about now? Do you still do that? Now kind of I stuff? just kind of like fall over myself a lot. <laughs> and like I need a lot of help. Like most of the people on this trip have like, like helped me move around. So. That's good. Brian. Brian. Oh, Brian. Ouch. So, Brian, where are you? Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. I'm going to he's right there. <laughs> Brian, okay, now where are you from again? I'm from Denver, Colorado. Denver, Colorado. Yes. And what was your word? Uh, self reflecting. Self reflecting, like yeah. a mirror. What? Like a mirror. Yes. I, I suppose, <laughs> I suppose, yeah. That was actually a very good example of self reflection. I asked you, are you self reflecting like a mirror? And you said, right there, it was self reflecting. <laughs> okay, so go ahead, explain to me. Well, um, I guess I spent like a, the last, you know, two years try, really trying to figure out like what my role was, um, not just like who I am, but like my role was like in this world and particularly like what I would, like what my purpose, like why I'm motivated to do the things that I do. And like part of that came in to be pa being passionate about different things. Just and like yeah. See, I actually just, That's I, the self-reflection comes from believing yourself that you're strong. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. Next. Now, I don't know your name. I'm going to guess. Wait. You are Jessica. Yes. Okay. And I was going to have passionate be my word, but Katie got the reporter first. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so a creative, I guess, would uh, also work because I like to, in my passion for experiencing new things, I also like to uh, and come to understand it better by creating and sort of responding, sort of a you know, learning and responding sort of uh, way of understanding the world. Do you create stuff yourself? I am a painter, a painter. and uh, I put together art shows and sell my work and uh, what kind of painting? Like, uh, are we talking expressionist or the one with the little dots? Um, <laughs> right now, it's more of a, uh, it's more representational of people uh, hanging out. I did one ser ser series about um, cafeteria workers, people working in the dining hall at my school. Mm -hmm. And uh, another series I just finished uh, was student life uh, in my school. And I'm trying to, you know, come to understand and articulate the community and some of the uh, the influences, the personalities in our community through visual expression. Mm -hmm. All right, now, I think we're on the last person. And you have two microphones, so you can, you know, <laughs> in, stereo. Right, <laughs> in stereo. And you are, oh, Jay. Jake. Jake. Nice to meet you, Jake. Jake. Okay. And you are <laughs> open. Yes, uh, my word is open because I'm very open to new ideas, new ways of seeing the world, new experiences. Uh, often, I'm not easily rattled if something very different happens or something that I'm not used to. I can kind of accept it and work with that. Okay. Any examples? Uh, well, this example is kind of a stretch, but I'm going to use it anyway. Okay. Uh, one time, I was uh, driving home with my friends from a concert. Which concert? A, a concert of one of my friend's bands. Okay. And I was going down a two-lane way, two lane highway at night, uh, going about 65 miles an hour. Which is too fast. Maybe a little too fast. <laughs> and I decided to change lanes into the left lane. And as I was going into the left lane, I saw something in the middle of the road up ahead. It was kind of dark. I could tell it was like a carcass of some kind, maybe like a dead raccoon on the road. So I kind of positioned my car so I'd just go over it. Not a big deal. And as I came closer, I realized that it was not a, a dead raccoon or a dead rabbit, but rather maybe a dead elk or a dead moose that was huge, <laughs> the size, <laughs> gigantic. And by the time I realized this, I could not turn, so I had to plow through it, <laughs> cutting it in half and spraying blood and hair all over my car. <laughs> So my friends were like freaking out. You know, I gotta tell you right now, I have no idea where this story is going. How it does have a point. Don't worry. Okay, okay. So, it, so, so, 
<laughs> you so, and you thought I was bad with it, you know, making jokes on. Okay, go. So, so we're so we're going on the highway. The, the the animals cut in half behind us. My car is looks like I just ran over somebody. It's horrible. We're, we were also lost, and my bumper was hanging off. And my friends are freaking out. They don't know what to do. And I was kind of just like. All right, we'll work it out. It's all right. So we pulled into a, you know, a restaurant, and people were looking at my car horrified. And uh, the next day, uh, the cheerleaders at my high school were having a car wash to raise money, so I just took it there. Oh. <laughs> and it was all right, because I was open to that new experience. It did a, you know, that's not what we call a bit of a stretch. That's like a ridiculously large stretch. <laughs> well, I, I do have one other, maybe a better example. <laughs> oh, no, that's OK. That's, okay. That's, okay. that's fine. That's fine. But I want to give the audience, you guys in the back, what is the motivation uh, inside, uh, inside your heart? I think, I don't think it was motivation for the presidential scholar. I think it was motivation to achieve, to, to make ourselves the best that we could be to get into a good college. And the same qualities that led us there led us to this okay. award. Yeah, I, I'd have to say, again, uh, all my friends and everybody else, they were so supportive and very encouraging of me to do this. And I think they really got me interested in becoming one and really they really wanted me to go out there and they, they wanted to see me do it and all of that so I think I think my friends were a huge influence on that. Um, I guess I just wanted to, to find out if um, if I would receive the award and just to see how much I could do myself I guess I like to challenge myself and I don't know find out more about who I am. Yeah I have to second her um, I'm pretty competitive but a lot of that is just self-competition setting goals and trying to achieve them. Presidential scholar huge goal and um, I think we're all very lucky to be here today. Good. Well, I do want to thank all of you guys. Thank you for sharing your stories with us today. And I hope want to thank you guys also for joining Small Talk. So we will see you back here next time on Small Talk. Bye bye.